that motivates them. That's the physiological. Do you get it or not? I'm with you. Okay. So, for physiological need, it means workers are motivated because they need to fulfill, they need to be able to afford the basic human needs. So, and how would they be able to afford the basic human needs? They need to be employed. Mm. So now that they have the job, they are motivated doing that job. They are happy doing that job. They have the desire to achieve goals because with, with, them, with them doing well, they'll be able to provide, they'll be able to afford the basic needs. So they are happy. They are motivated because they need to, have, they need to be able to afford the basic needs. Mm. That's the motivation. So the motiv motivation comes, they derive the motivation uh, based on the fact that with the job they are doing, if they're doing well, they'll be able to feed, they'll be able to clothe, they'll be able to shelter. Mm. Is it clear? Yes. That is physiological. Then safety and security. People need protection from any form of danger and from physical and psychological threats. They also need routine and familiarity for safety and security. People want to work, yes. Mm. But they want to work in an environment that is safe. They want to work in an environment that is not putting their life in risk. Mm. Do you get it? Yeah. So that is about safety. Any question about safety? The third one, social needs. Obviously, of course you need So to people are needs. social animals. This means that they, need, they have social needs. People live... People like to communicate and make friends. People also like to care for. To, uh, to, people like to be cared for, to care and to belong to groups. Work and satisfy social needs. This is because people often work with others. This provides opportunity for people to meet, develop, and, to meet and develop friendship relationships. So the second need, as soon as the physiological need is met, now that you have the job, the next step in the pyramid is social needs. Where you want to move around with people where you want to associate with people mm. so some people are motivated at work because they want to do best so that they can be able to mingle mingle they are be able to work share ideas with people so that's the reason they are working make friends or something friendship sharing of ideas together with people that is the reason why they are working mm. so they leave home because they want to meet new people they leave home because they want to have more knowledge about things that is social need is it clear mm. the third one esteem esteem what is esteem okay. I'm still okay. no it's, okay. it's up there up yeah okay I'm, I'm okay i got there anyway so the third one esteem is esteem is about your self-esteem people work people are motivated because they want to be respected Mm -hmm. So some people are at work, some people have that job because they feel with that job, the society will respect them, the colleagues will respect them, their age, their peer group will respect them. That is you want, to, you want to get respected. That is self-esteem. Do you get it? Mm. The fourth one, self-actualization. Some people are motivated because they want to be the best version of themselves. They want to be better than what they have. Mm. So the motivation comes from getting better than what you wear mm. you want to get better yes at, at your skills yes that is what self-actualization is i want to be the best version of me is it clear yes so some workers are motivated because of that any question about that no so we have the need and the work can, the need and work can provide physiological need adequate pay subsidized we talked about them already yeah money. Love and belief. we talked about them so all these needs are part of the hierarchy of needs and how can they be fulfilled they can be fulfilled with work any question about it no obviously mister you you want uh, you want a good pay a good safety and you want uh, good people ar around you yes just for the job yeah yeah so master also said that when businesses try to motivate workers by satisfying their needs they should recognize the following one once one set of needs have been satisfied, they are no longer a motivator. Workers can only be motivated by achieving the next step, the next set of needs in the hierarchy. Therefore, if a worker has enough pay and feels secure at work, raising pay levels would not motivate that worker. A business would have to find ways of satisfying higher needs. So, according to Maslow, if you are using the hierarchy of needs, you have to put in your mind as an employer 
that as soon as the first need is satisfied, workers, it can never be a motivator anymore. Physiological need, that's my motivator. I'm yeah. working because I want to feed. I want to, I want to clothe. I want to shelter. Yeah, this is why I'm working. Yeah. Then, as soon as I'm able to do this, as soon as I can afford this, there's no point. That is no more my motivator. I would think about a higher need, like mm. social. So as an, employ as an employer, it is important for you to understand that as soon as the need of an employee is met, it, you need to find a higher need to keep him motivated. Is it clear? clear? The second one. If lower needs are not met, workers cannot be motivated if a business tries to meet higher needs. So you cannot, you cannot skip the steps. Mm. You can't skip step one to go to step three. No way. Workers need... The, the first thing is physiological. Mm. So if physiological is not met, you want to go to self-esteem, you're wasting your time. It is not possible. Exactly. Do you understand? Mm. So missing one step means you have to start afresh. Is it clear? Exactly. The third one, if a business fails to meet a particular need, workers are not likely to be motivated. For example, if a worker is overlooked for promotion, that worker may start to work less, hard, less hard, or look for another job. So, each step has to be fulfilled. That is the point. Mm. If you're not fulfilling each step, your workers will be demotivated, and you won't be able to see the best version of them. Mm. Clear? Yeah. So, we'll move on. That's about Maslow. So, we'll go to Frederick Taylor. Taylor's ideology. One of the first motivational theories to emerge was that of Frederick Taylor in 1911. Taylor said that workers were motivated by money. After observing workers in manufacturing, Taylor recognized that many employees were in inefficient and not working to their full potential. He also thought that the pay system were not motivating them to work. After making a close examination of working, pract working practices, he recommended that jobs should be broken down into simple tasks and that works. That workers should. So, for Frederick Taylor, it was one that comes with what we call division of labor. Mm. The breaking down of production process into different stage and each stage is being performed by different people. So, Frederick Taylor comes up with that division of labor. So, division of labor would lead to specialization. So, look at the first thing there. Use specialist tools and equipment. So, for according to Frederick, Frederick Taylor, mm. he believes workers are not reaching their full potential because the employers are not making them to reach it. So, mm. what are the things the employers should do? Number one, Give them specialist tools. Divide, yeah. break down their production process. Like apps, for example. Follow a strict working procedure. Be strict about work practices. Receive proper training. Ensure they are trained, they are equipped. Mm. Give them the skills, required knowledge that will, that will ensure them to be able to perform that task. Get breaks to recover from the physical strain of work. Allow them break. That, that reduces stress. Be paid according to what they produce. Good pay for day work for day, uh, day, uh, day pay for day work. So you pay them according to what they do. So we call it peace rate or time rate. Pay workers according to whatever they do. So these are ways, these are what Frederick Taylor suggested mm -hmm. to employers because he felt or he, he believed did, that he did work. It successfully. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's happening really. It's happening also now. Workers, workers are, some workers are motivated because of money. Mm. Yes or no? Yeah. Some workers are motivated because of money. So, according to Taylor, divide the job, pay them accordingly, mm. give them the required training, give them the tools needed, they will perform. That is according to Taylor. Is it clear? Yes. So, once the business are determined the most, the most efficient way to carry out tasks and organize the workforce, Taylor felt that employees should get a fair day's pay for a fair day's job. Or work. This meant that pay should be linked to output in order to motivate workers. So according to Frederick Taylor, pay workers based on what they do. Is pay, it clear? So I will pay workers what 